partly cloudy good morning to some of you mostly cloudy for others and for others of you partly to mostly sunny transition period going on right now over the noon hour as we move through the afternoon the uh, skies will continue to clear off and we will be looking at mostly sunny skies i hope your day is going well for you wherever you might be and hopefully that sun comes out a little early because uh, it'll warm up right now. Currently, we are looking at 73 degrees at the airport, 76 here at Radio Center, because we are looking at partly sunny skies right now. Downtown Midland is at 75. Downtown Bay City is at 74. Uh, as I said, we've got clouds, we've got sun, we got a little bit of both. Kind of like what we saw over the last 24 hours. We're looking at thunderstorm activity, very spotty. Most locations picking up nothing in the way of moisture other than just hearing some thunder and maybe an occasional flash. And that was about it as far as lightning goes. Others of you picking up a little bit more. By and large, over in Michigan's thumb, the upper thumb here on county, barely a trace up to about seven, eight, one hundredths of an inch. Uh, looking at Saginaw County, a little bit more in spots. But again, the rule of thumb. Maybe a tenth, maybe a little bit less. Uh, we did see uh, 12 hundredths of an inch up in the immediate Bay City area and one part of Bay City. The other part, they got nothing in the way of moisture. And that cloud was the same cloud. It just uh, moved over and dropped a little bit here and there. Frankenmuth picked up about 15 hundredths of an inch. And really, out of all the reporting stations that we're looking at in southeast Michigan, Frankenmuth appears to receive the most when it came to the reporting stations. We have had some isolated cases, though, uh, unofficial, of where we did see upwards of about two-tenths to 25 hundredths of an inch. But again, that was an isolated thunderstorm that just happened to move through. No serious uh, wind issues to, to go along with a lot of these thunderstorms, just a whole lot of noise as the storms move through. What are we looking at right now? Eventually a front is going to be dropping down through the state. Now, currently, we are looking at a uh, west wind about 9 miles per hour. Barometer is rising at 29.92. That barometric pressure will continue to rise as we go into the afternoon. You'll know when the front eventually moves through because not only are the skies going to continue to clear out, but we'll see a northwest breeze this afternoon. And then that northwest breeze will continue through the nighttime hours and into the day tomorrow. Not a strong gusty wind, thank goodness, but it is going to be 10, 12, maybe 15 miles per hour. That will happen tomorrow. And then eventually later in the day tomorrow, the winds will change direction once again, coming a little bit more out of the west. The reason for that is because there is going to be a system that will be tracking through the Ohio River Valley. And that system is going to generate some precipitation for uh, extreme southern Michigan. If we see any precipitation at all, it'll be right along the border with Indiana and Ohio. Uh, southeast Michigan might pick up a little bit more, but I don't think it's going to come very close even to the Detroit area as that low tracks through. That low pressure system will be located in, uh, I want to say, uh, southern Illinois, uh, late tonight and early tomorrow morning, tracking through Cincinnati and then moving off to the east over the next 24 to 36 hours. A little bit of a chilly start this morning. Ironwood started the morning off at 47 degrees and a lot of low 50s all across the UP. What's going to happen? Well, our temperature is going to continue to rise. We should make it way, our way up to about 79 by the time the day is all done with the help of that sun. Mostly cloudy skies, though, tonight because of that low down in the Ohio Valley, but very little, if anything, in the way of moisture in Michigan, other than maybe an isolated shower or two in the southeast corner. 54 is going to be our low tonight. Sun will set this evening at 911. Rise tomorrow morning at 558. 70 degrees, so cooler tomorrow for a high than where we are right now. Cloudy skies, but then sun as we move into the afternoon hours uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow night, mostly clear, 50. Then on Friday, partly sunny. A uh, real weak front is going to be sliding through. 
72 is going to be our high on Friday. 46 will be our low on Friday night. And then on Saturday, because of that front moving through, we'll struggle to hit 70 degrees on Saturday. I think it'll probably be about 68 and then 52 for a low on Saturday night. Sunday, we'll move into the 70s once again and stay in the 70s pretty much all next week. Chances of precipitation, as we mentioned, very little chance now. Uh, it appears as though the next best chance precipitation in the Great Lakes Bay area is going to be later in the day on Sunday, Sunday night, and then into Monday and Tuesday of next week as a series of systems will be moving through. Below average, that's the temperature trend that's going to continue all the way through the 14th of the month, slightly above as far as the moisture goes. Now, monthly total. The month of June, we should pick up about three and a quarter inches of rain. Uh, as far as uh, the most, 6.92 inches of rain fell in 1996. The least amount of precipitation in the month of June, six tenths of an inch. And that was set in the dry year of 1988. So that kind of gives you an idea of just uh, where we felt. Incidentally, um, the months of May last year, we had uh, almost uh, five and three quarters inches of rain a year ago. And a year ago today, our high was 77 and our low was 51. So today is going to be pretty close to where we were 365 days ago. More on the weather as we go through the broadcast. Cody Harris standing by, but before we get to the markets, we want to remind you the weather forecast brought to you by the folks at Nutrient Ag Solutions. Nutrient Ag Solutions has the local expertise to recommend the corn, soybean, and other seed products that are the best fit for your field. Plus, unparalleled agronomic support with products and services to unlock yield potential and improve crop performance from planting to harvest. Ask about our financing options to help you get more from every acre and lead the field. Visit your local Nutrient Ag Solutions branch or go to NutrientAgSolutions.com. Say, do you want to unlock the secret to higher yields? If you're applying dry fertilizer, the key to better yield potential is Titan XC. Titan XC is a fertilizer biocatalyst that unlocks and releases the bound up nutrients in granular fertilizer, promoting better root uptake and plant growth. Drive performance this season and beyond. Release more nutrition. Expect better results with Titan XC. For more information, visit lpi.ag slash unlock or contact your Nutrient Ag Solutions crop consultant today. Well, no matter what the weather is going to be, the folks at the Michael Sarr Crop Insurance Agency want you to be prepared. Very good advice because being prepared, that's what we call risk management, taking advantage of the good things, protecting yourself against the bad. The Michael Sarr Crop Insurance Agency can do that for you. They are licensed to serve all of Michigan with both conventional and organic crop insurance. Their agents can be reached directly on their cell for questions or emergencies, or you can call the office. They're located in Reese at 989-868-4722. We say good morning to Cody Harris over at Star of the West. Cody, what's going on on June the 1st on our markets today? Well, good morning, Kay. I, I mean, I wish I had some good news for you here this morning, but now we're kind of jumping right back on the train that we were yesterday. Everything seems to be sliding in the downward direction here this morning, Carrie. Uh, kind of looking at everything the way it sits right now. Let's see here. We got cash wheat that's down 52 cents, 1001 on the white, 951 on the red. New crop wheat is also down 52, 1006 on the white, 966 on the red. Look over at cash corn that's down 30 here this morning at 659. New crop corn is down 28 at 629. Then look over at soybeans. Cash soybeans are down five at 1638. And new crop soybeans are actually up one here at the moment, Terry, at 1446. What did they do? Get a look at that crop progress report or something? Yeah, that's definitely adding a little bit of uh, bearish news here to the market. Seems like corn and soybeans have definitely caught up to maybe around normal pace after a big jump from last week in the prospective planning report issued yesterday. Uh, in addition to that, I mean, wheat's definitely been driven by that talk that Russia may be willing to allow some ships of grain to leave Ukraine if the right sanctions are eased, uh, which is making some wheat traders understandably nervous. 
um, at this time. You know, we don't know if we can trust Russia at this point or not. And even that proposal seems maybe unlikely. And there's been really no official response from the West at this point on, on what's going to happen on that. So we've seen a lot of risk taking coming off the board, especially on the wheat side of things with that news coming out. But definitely good news on the planting side across the board for crops, even spring wheat up in the northern plains. Um, in addition to a couple other things across the board, really kind of putting a bear's tone on this market. And the, the wheat is really looking fine out there, Cody. Oh, yes. In our neck of the woods, wheat looks really good. You know, I did a kind of a little crop tour kind of coming home over the weekend and yesterday evening. Wheat looks really good for where we're at right now, and especially what we were thinking about this crop, you know, as it came through winter. You know, we kind of had a, a wet beginning of spring. Um, and even kind of all through spring, I guess it was pretty wet, but wheat looks extremely well at this point. The last time I looked, uh, they were rating wheat poor to very poor under 20%. And uh, I think I mentioned it once before, uh, back uh, a little ways ago, about 40% of the wheat was rated poor to very poor here in Michigan. So we've made some major, major steps plus. That is correct, yeah. You look at the grand scheme of things, you look at the whole country as far as, you know, wheat progress. I said, I mean, as a country, you're at 29%. I think the winter wheat crop was rated good to excellent. You know, when you kind of look at the grand scheme of things, and that's not very good. Like you said, you dialed in. Michigan's definitely kind of making up some big ground um, and definitely carrying a low, especially the Midwest, even Ohio. Their crop's looking, Indiana, their crop's looking well um, as well. So, I mean, we're definitely making steps in the right direction as we get close to our harvest uh, probably you know about a month away or so you know if everything kind of stays on pace where we're at right now all right cody you have a good day all right yes he was to use well terry thank you cody harris over at star of the west doug klein from oppenheimer joins me right now the market report brought to you by schaefer and beer line where it is spring ram commercial truck season going on they know trucks and vans so you can buy with confidence from a dealer where family and service sells cars. You know, they've been in business since 1852. Schaefer and Beer Line. And by the folks at Thumb Bank, serving the needs of agriculture for well over 125 years. Two locations in Bay City. Also Cassidy, Caseville, Pigeon, and Bad Axe. Thumb Bank, where relationships are built on trust. Doug, good morning. Good morning. Happy June the 1st. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's the good news. No, not really. Gasoline hit a new high today. Oh, right boy. 406 and a half. And lately, we've been able to add at least a dollar to that for all the graft in between wholesale and retail. So, I mean, you're probably easily looking at $5, 506 for gasoline. Wow. It's going to make staying home look all the more uh, appealing, I think, I'm afraid. So wow. Who knows what happens. But, yeah, a lot of red on the grains. That, that bloom is kind of off the rose, so we'll see how far that, that goes down before they stop beating on that. I think I'm going to chop down some wood because uh, I got a price on propane. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, I, I don't even know if I can... Uh, uh, may I put a pencil to grilling right now? This is uh, this is getting a little expensive. <laughs> Gonna have to go back to charcoal. I think so. Look in the, <laughs> look in the back of the garage there. I know I had a bag here somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. One grill I burned out years ago. Oh my God. Well, here's your numbers, and they're not pretty. The July corn is seven twenty three and a quarter, down thirty and a quarter. December corn is six eighty three and a half, down twenty eight. And September of 23 corn, 636 and a half, down 21 cents. July soybeans, 1680 and three quarters, down two and a half. The November soybeans, 1512 and a quarter, up two and three quarters. And uh, November of uh, 23 soybeans, 1386 and a half, down 11 and a half. Um, July wheat is 1032 and three quarters, down 54 and three quarters. December wheat is 1054 and three quarters, down 52 and a quarter. And uh, July of 23 wheat is 1027, down 44 cents. The crude oil is 116.13, up a dollar 46. The heating oil is 411.12, up 17 and a half cents. Gasoline is 406, up 14 and 14.87 cents. Natural gas 861 and three quarters, up 47 and a half cents. Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar gets you 126.69 at the border. That's up 29 ticks. 
The dollar gets you 130.11. Yen, that's up 143 ticks. The euro's at 106.33. That's down 100 ticks. And the dollar's at 102.66. That's up 91 ticks. Gold is at 18.39, down $3.70. Silver's 21.82, up 13 cents. Platinum's at 987. That's up $18.70. Yeah, have a good one, Doug. Thank you. you we'll too. talk to you again tomorrow. Doug Klein over at Oppenheimer. When we return, a special event coming up in the not too distant future. We'll talk about wheat as well as a few other things as well. Jody Pollock Newsom will be joining us in just a moment. But before we do that, here's this. How do you make the most of your mow? Depends on who you ask. For Rodney, he does it with a versatile John Deere X350 lawn tractor because, as he puts it, This lawn brings me such joy when I see it. It's a great place to do Tai Chi. With features like one-touch mulch control and a comfortable operator station, Rodney steers his way to a job well done. Then he can work on his mind, body, and well-being. This is my zen time. Plus, with his 42-inch Excel deep mower deck that adjusts to a variety of heights, it's easy for Rodney to see stripes. I am definitely a lines guy. I've been working on this for 18 years. Rodney makes the most of his mow because his lawn is a happy place. There are millions of ways to make the most of your mow. How will you make the most of yours? Nothing runs like a deer. Contact one of Tri-County Equipment's 11 locations in Bad Axe, Birch Run, Burton, Carrow, Fenton, Lapeer, Marlette, Reese, Rochester Hills, Saginaw, or Sandusky, or visit Tri-County Equipment online at tricountyequipment.com. Experience the most reliable RTK signal from PC Ag Solutions, compatible with most GPS receivers. Trade in your old radio or modem and get an affordable subscription through us. We have over 25 base station locations across the Lower Peninsula, and we're always looking to add more to our network. Discover more power, more accuracy, and more coverage with our 450 megahertz signal. Call us to learn more today. PC Ag Solutions, 989-868-4444. Well, the calendar is beginning to fill up a little bit. All sorts of activity going on in agriculture. A big one, though, in the month of June is usually a field day that goes on. They move it once in a while from MSU to the research farm over by Frankenmuth. It looks like, Jody Pollock Newsom, you're going to be in the Frankenmuth area come up here in the month of June, right? We are. We are so excited to be back out and with everyone and to be at the Saginaw Valley Research Center on Thursday, June 16th. So it is coming up pretty quick. And you've got a long list of people to talk to, uh, the folks. But I guess first and foremost, we're looking at a really good wheat crop, especially in the in the thumb area here in the Great Lakes Bay area. Oh, definitely. You know, you're never really sure what you're going to get in the spring. And this weather we've had, it's been a little bit cooler. It has worked just great. That's what the wheat likes. And we do have a great looking crop. Now, when does uh, everything kick off, Jody? Well, for us, Thursday, June 16th at the Saginaw Valley Research and Extension Center, 815 will be registration and Jan Byrne will be there from the MSU Plant Diagnostic Center. So if you have something that doesn't look right in that wheat, dig it up, bring it with you. She can take a look at it. And then at 9 o'clock, we're going to hop on wagons, and we are going to head to the field with researchers. And we have six different presentations talking about everything from canopy cover, weed control, cereal crops like spring wheat, oats, rye, the variety release work that uh, the wheat breeder has done, and even different planting methods. And we'll have all that going on in the morning, in the field. Now, you've got something really special coming up to wrap up the field day this year. What is it, Jody? We really do. You know, Terry, it doesn't seem possible, but we are an organization that has hit that 10th year birthday. So we are going to do uh, a nice lunch, and then we're going to have just a short program to kind of remind folks how we got started because the first we chuck off did not pass. So what happened? How did momentum build? We're going to talk a little bit about what we've done, what we've accomplished, and then look to the future and talk a little bit more about our yield enhancement network. And growers who attend, they get six RUP credits and they get four CCA credits. So not only can you have fun, you can learn and you can get credit. And for more information, we can go to the website. Where is that, Jody? 
Uh, www.miwheat.org. On the left side, there's a box that says what's hot. It has the agenda for the celebration, for the field day. And please link to register because when you link to register, that's where you put in your code and stuff to get those RUP credits. So you really need to get online and get registered. Fantastic. Jody, you take care. Have a great day, okay? I will, and I look forward to seeing you on the 16th. Yes, we sure do. Jody Pollock Newsom with the Michigan Wheat Board. Let's go over to Ed Garber right now from uh, Nutrient Ag. Ed, uh, everybody's got to really be pleased with this weather. It would have been nice to have a nice shower, though, overnight, wouldn't it? It would have been. You know, I'm, uh, I live near Owasso, and I'm home right now, and we're actually getting a nice shower right now. We didn't get anything overnight, but getting a nice little shower right now, so that's so, welcome. So spotty, so spotty. Any tips that uh, producers should be aware of right now? You know, not so much. Um, you know, planting's kind of wrapping up in most places. Uh, I guess my only tip would be get out there, look around, see what you got. Um, you know, check the stands, check the emergence, uh, look for problems. Weed control, you know, that's next, right? Now we got to get on the weeds. Yeah, but, and uh, again, availability of product to control those uh, weeds. How, how you looking there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, overall, pretty good. I think most everybody has a plan, and and uh, you know, obviously, things don't always go according to plan. But I've said it before on this call, Terry. Just communicate, communicate often with your salesman, with your crop consultant, whoever you're working with, and uh, we'll get through this. Very good, Ed Garber. Always take care. We'll talk to you again. Okay. Hey, have a great day. Thank you. I will. Jerry Samalski joining me right now over at Bay Landscaping and Garden Center. Uh, Jerry, we were talking about uh, wheat. Uh, the grass is, uh, uh, it, it's doing okay right now. It, it is, Terry. And, you know, as far as planting plants, too, I've had people say, well, it's after the holiday, so it's too late. You know, it's not. And Ed Garber was just saying, we got to get out in the field and take a look. When you plant something, get out of the house and take a look. See how it's doing. See if you need to pull a couple of weeds. See if they need water. And, and do that regularly. And even if you planted it a month ago, come the middle of July, you're still going to have to pay attention to it as if you plant it the first week of July. So, again, they just don't have enough roots out. So to be like the farmers, all you residential people, get out and look at your crop, see how it's doing, evaluate, and see what it needs. All righty. Jerry Samalski, you take care. Have a great day, okay? Yes, sir. Jerry Samalski, Bay Landscaping and Garden Center in Essex, Phil. Farm Service brought to you today by the folks at Steiner Tractor Parts. New parts for old tractors made easy. 800-234-3280 or go to their website at steinertractor.com. And by the folks at Quality Roasting of Reese, offering competitive, consistent prices for your soybeans. Give them a call for a quote today. We'll be back at 1230 with an update, so you stick around for that. Now we conclude our program with the playing of our national anthem.